Thank you very much, Mr. President, uh, Honorable uh, Member of the Parliament, Honorable Vice President, dear members and guests. Uh, it's a real pleasure for me and honor to be here today uh, to discuss with you a pressing issue of the risks uh, posed by disinformation and foreign interference. And it's very frank when I say that it's a pleasure for me because uh, after working five years for municipality, then two years for region, and then five years or six years at the Ministry for Regional Development, I can confirm that my heart still beats for, for the regions. So thank you for inviting me. Uh, I also want to thank you for your roadmap uh, on the European elections uh, and the opinion on the role of local and regional authorities in countering disinformation and foreign interference. We are less than a year ahead of the biggest democratic exercise in Europe, namely the elections to the European Parliament, and there is still time to prepare ourselves and become more resilient, because we have to count with the fact that there will be attempts to disinform, to influence and to manipulate. Russian war in Ukraine is just the latest reminder of the efforts our enemies put in these methods. I hope today no one has any doubts that Kremlin fights with bombs in Ukraine and with words in EU. It is part of military doctrine of Russia for generations. Now, with digital revolutions, uh, they simply gained new tools to do that. And I am sorry to say that they have some very agile proxies also on uh, European Union territory. The response to that threat must be democratic and European, because the freedom of speech in democracy is sacred. I would like to talk about what all of us can do to support strong democracy, immune to the threats coming from inside and outside. Our response to some ch such challenges can only be successful if we engage all Europeans, because a democracy that excludes is not a democracy at all. In the recent Eurobarometer, over a third, one third of citizens felt that democracy was the one core value that the <coughs> European Parliament should protect above all else. And 50 Four percent of the respondents expressed satisfaction with the way democracy works in the EU. Is it enough? 54 percent? In my view, it's not. Our mandate is therefore clear. There remains room for improvement, and we must do whatever we can to live up to citizens' expectations to deliver stronger democracies. With the 2024 European Parliament elections approaching, we are preparing several initiatives to make elections more resilient, free and fair. With one of the largest democratic exercises in the world less than a year away, we are also actively working with national authorities through the European Cooperation Network on Elections to promote and facilitate the participation in these elections for all citizens. Within the framework of this network, uh, the Commission also established a joint mechanism for electoral resilience. This initiative helps member states exchange expertise in areas such as disinformation, cybersecurity and online forensics. Member states can use the mechanism to build their capacity to fight unlawful interference, discover covered political funding or ensure effective implementation of their electoral rules online. Uh, let me say a few words about the European Democracy Action Plan from 2020. This, that's the plan which sets out targeted actions to preserve open democratic debate. It is first comprehensive plan to address the threat of disinformation and foreign interference. Our approach recognizes that an effective response to disinformation requires the engagement of all stakeholders, industry, civil society, researchers and national and regional authorities. The actions at the regional level and at local level play a very important role, in particular for the media literacy and public awareness raising as key tools to counter and limit the impact of disinformation. One thing that we continue to observe is an increasing distrust to all sorts of authorities or experts. This creates a breathing ground uh, to trust in conspiracy theories and unverified sources. This is why regional and local authorities are so important. You are closest to the people, 
you are dealing with the daily fears and problems, you have the chance to become the most trusted source of important information. We are trying to support these efforts, but also address the challenge on the EU level. The new anti-disinformation -disinform code is an important piece of the EU's efforts to fight disinformation. It is our most ambitious and comprehensive toolbox for tackling disinformation to date, offering a space for fast action, cooperation and experimentation. It is a voluntary tool, but linked with legislation signed by major online platforms, such as Facebook, Google, we have all the big ones uh, except Twitter. Uh, we have on board civil society and many other relevant bodies. The new code sets out commitments to fight online disinformation in various e areas and equally in all member states and all languages. Let me stress that we are paying particular attention to the regional responsibilities of the signatories of the code. This includes dedicating sufficient resources to implement the code in all languages, making sure that the algorithm and content moderation is equally effective in all languages, and having a strong fact-checking coverage in all member states. Uh, we also established the so-called European Digital Media Observatory and 14 regional hubs of the Media Observatory, which now cover the whole EU. I don't have time to go into details, but uh, in case there are questions, I can uh, answer how uh, this observatory works. Uh, Commission representations have many cooperation initiatives with regions and local authorities. The scope of exchange may vary in the member states and cover different areas like media literacy, information awareness, detection of or response. We also uh, have 440 Europe direct centres uh, present in almost all regions of the EU. I would wish uh, uh, more intense cooperation between our uh, regional centres and the regional and local authorities. There is always a space for something more intense. In June 2022, the Commission, in close cooperation with the European Parliament and the Committee of the Regions, launched an open call for local councillors to join the network uh, which is called Building Europe with Local Councillors. This groundbreaking project engages with locally elected politicians to support their effort to communicate with citizens, local media and other local stakeholders. Let me also conclude with just a brief mention of the so-called Defense of Democracy, which is an initiative we are working on right now. The twin aim is to tackle the threat of foreign interference while building resilience from within by encouraging inclusive civic engagement and citizen participation in our democracies. One of the main elements we are considering is the legislative initiative on transparency of interest representation activities remunerated or directed by third country governments and entities. Other elements that are under preparation include Commission recommendations to inclusive and resilient electoral processes and on civic, civic engagement. It is vital to have transparency of foreign funding. Uh, what may initially seem as a, an innocent or even good investment on local level might take a completely different shape when you see what is happening on national or European level. In many discussions, uh, I had uh, in the recent weeks, I also understand that it is mainly the national authorities that have some tools to assess the scale and risks for foreign fu funding. Regional and local authorities remain largely defenseless against this challenge. We are preparing the package for autumn this year to be, to be complete, complete about the, the concrete information. Uh, on this Defence of Democracy package. Ladies and gentlemen, we all have to play our part to support and protect democracy. It is clear, democracy is not a perpetuum mobile, something which is given, something which is automatic. This is something which needs to protect, defend and nurture every day. I count on creativity, support and active role on the Committee of the Regions and all its members in this most important task of our generation. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Madam Vice President. Mr. Glucksmann, you have the floor for five minutes. Merci, Monsieur. Thank you very much, Chairman. Colleagues, Madam Vice President, for too long, we have been Democrats out of uh, comfort, inertia, or habit. The moment has come for us to be Democrats of conviction. And Madam Vice President, you yourself said that democracy is chipped away if it is not uh, in, um, nurtured by our investment. For too long, we have let foreign dictators wipe their feet on our sovereignty. They have turned our political class into a supermarket where they could come and do their shopping. They have attacked our infrastructure or our hospitals during a pandemic without reacting. We've been weak and naive for too long, which has threatened our democracy. For more than a decade, we've been the targets of numerous external attacks operated by uh, state or parastate actors propped up by Russia and China. These attacks have been financed and organized in a strategic way. They have taken different forms, political uh, uh, campaign funding, cyber attacks on strategic infrastructure, investments, manipulation of information and uh, the capture of elites. It has uh, put the EU in a state of hybrid warfare. We must protect our sovereignty and our democracy, and we have no longer to be weak. It's imperative that we become conscious of this at every level and that our response be both European, national, regional and local. So I'm delighted by the uh, draft opinion by your committee on the role of local and regional governments in the fight against disinformation and foreign in attempts to interfere and attack our democracy. The Special Committee on uh, Foreign Interference that I chair is coming to a close soon after three years of debate and missions. In June, the European Parliament adopted a second report saying that uh, local and regional uh, politicians are strategic in deploying our uh, strategy in fighting disinformation. Cybersecurity, infrastructure, education, you have a huge role to play. Local governments should have the right tools to fight against manipulation, interference and disinformation. During the COVID-19 pandemic or the Russian invasion of Ukraine, we've all observed the uh, direct effects of these uh, disinformation campaigns on citizens. So today I would like to focus on one particular aspect which underlies all strategies uh, aiming to make our democracy more durable. First of all, education. Local and regional governments should include edu uh, media education in uh, school syllabuses as soon as possible and as from a very young age. It should create support for teachers to make sure that educational activities are adapted to local realities. We should have education campaigns to help people to decipher media messages, and they should be as broad as possible. This should address people in schools as well as older people. We also need to give increased support to independent press. The, exist of local, the existence of local media should be considered as fundamental for the survival of democracy. Foreign interference is not limited to uh, manipulating information. We need to get serious on the issue of cybersecurity, and you have a role to play in that. We also need to get serious when it comes to the strategic infrastructure that we need to protect against hostile investment, and there again you have a role to play. We also need to protect the funding of public life and make the rules governing our debate more transparent. The work of the Parliament on foreign interference is now coming to an end. But we're very far from having won the war, particularly when it comes to uh, uh, IT. We need a cross-cutting st strategy to defend ourselves from uh, foreign interference 
And I have to say, I'm very much looking forward to the publication of the package on the defense of democracy from the European Commission. All hesitation or prevarication, any variation from the original uh, draft will be a defeat for democracy. The European Parliament voted with an overwhelming majority so that we could uh, get a common uh, tool to protect our uh, democracy against uh, foreign interference. It's time to act and therefore all levels of government need to work together. It is a precious resource and it's up to us to make sure that European democracy may triumph. Thank you, Ms. Glucksmann. Now I give the floor to Gustav Marek Brzezin, uh, is the rapporteur in our opinion. Uh, you have the floor for three minutes. President, Madam Commissioner, dear colleagues, dear friends, in recent years we have been hearing more and more often about disinformation campaigns which oraz zakłócać proces decyzyjny podważają zaufanie do instytucji oraz utrudniają obywatelom podejmowanie świadomych decyzji wykorzystując napięcia społeczne oraz mowę nienawiści prowadzą do radykalizacji która z kolei zagraża they are aimed at całej unii europejskiej przeciwdziałanie obcym manipulacji threaten basic values of the eu Disinformation and fighting it has to do with reinforcing democracy at local and regional level. Therefore, there is the need for preparing an opinion by the Committee of the Regions. That is a document that would contain clear recommendations which we can introduce in our local communities. While working on the opinion, I followed the I followed the objectives to prepare a tool set for identifying disinformation. And it's not only about being active at the EU level, but in particular about initiatives that we can introduce in our cities and regions. Dear friends, in my opinion, I, re I s uh, mentioned that there must be cooperation between different levels of power, but there must be local initiatives as well, together with uh, civic society and journalists. Fighting disinformation is not possible without media literacy. In our times, we see many problems that have to do with people being uh, able to verify and analyze information. In my opinion, I stress how important critical thinking is while using the media. I am convinced that actions aimed at supporting media literacy should cover all social groups irrespective of age or place of residence. When we talk about the media space, we must uh, mention journalists. In my opinion, I stress how important local media is for fighting disinformation and for creating a broader context for uh, transmitting information. Therefore, I believe it is very important that we support actively local initiatives for media and that we support organizations of the so-called fact-checkers. Now, the last issue of equal importance that I mention is uh, protecting the electoral process. It's very relevant because of the elections of the Europe, to the European Parliament to be, hold next, to be held next year. We need to make sure that political campaigns are transparent, which is why, in my opinion, I stress why it is relevant to encourage local communities, in particular younger generations, to follow elections and to analyze information provided about the elections. In the last months, we worked together, including in my region, and let me thank you, and I would like to also thank my expert, my uh, personnel, all colleagues, Mr. Muldison in particular, for your cooperation and involvement. Thank you. Thank you so much.
Now the floor goes to Patrick Molinos for three minutes. Merci, Monsieur le Président du Comité européen. Thank you, uh, President. Thank you, Vice President, Commissioner. Ladies and gentlemen, as representative of local and regional authorities, we need to underscore the importance of uh, increasing the awareness about the changes in our society to the point where they threaten our democratic model. Fighting against foreign interference is also, generally speaking, uh, fighting against uh, disinformation and and uh, fighting um, those who question science is absolutely vital to preserve democracy. So therefore, I believe that uh, the ongoing situation in uh, France would not have happened without uh, social media, which exacerbates and speeds up the uh, behaviours of I individuals. And this leads to a violence which uh, questions um, all instances of public authority in the country. We need to ensure cohesion in our societies. To do so, local uh, representatives need to uh, fight uh, disinformation. And I'd like to thank uh, members of the Civics Committee and thank Mr. Jejin for his opinion. What we want to see is that there's more focus on this topic. We need to look at what can be done at a local and a regional level to be able to fight against uh, those agents who want to uh, destabilise our democratic system. As a local representative, we are best placed to give local people trust and confidence in democracy. This will also give some trust in our national and European institutions. So we, as local representatives, need to ensure that the different levels of um, uh, different levels of represent representatives are respected. We know how to speak to local citizens. We can facilitate um, development of critical thinking and uh, contribute to um, better. Um, a better use of uh, IT tools. We can also fight against uh, uh, hate uh, speech. And on this, I'd like to uh, highlight the launch of the uh, Pavlovic Prize, which encourages uh, individuals to uh, work in this area in the defence of uh, European values. Now, finally, when we know that there will probably be a disinformation and interference against uh, um, the European elections in 2024, as a result of that, I say that local and regional authorities need to be uh, at the forefront of the fight against this. We need to continue to mobilise electors, including the youngest. Uh, we need to provide specific information about the EU, about what's going on uh, from uh, linked to the EU at a local level, and we need to be able to fight uh, the Europe bashing, which often is seen uh, in European elections. We need to ensure that the European elections are not just a way of settling national scores. Our contribution is absolutely vital. It will help us defend uh, our European democracy, but also to defend um, European democracy. Thank you. Now the floor goes to Member Geblevich for two minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Firstly, I would like to congratulate Mr. Jezin for a perfect drafting of opinion. And then I would like to thank very much on the behalf of the EPP group in the European Committee of Regions to Commissioner Jourova for all your dedicated work uh, to strengthening local democracy on the ground and to uh, and your important words about the role of the local and regional uh, authorities to promote uh, fighting for a democracy, for uh, uh, the promoting European values. But let me be frank that in many countries, just like in my country, in Poland, sometimes we feel really very abandoned. We feel really alone in this fight. Uh, I don't like to say, tell you one million of stories about the propaganda in our public state-owned TV, about the hate speech in, in, in this TV. And uh, what Paweł Adamowicz mentioned before, it was one of a victim. I can only tell you that in my country, I've, I've, um, I'm a president of two million of uh, inhabitants region in Poland, and I have n I have haven't been invited to the public uh, or TV station for five years. So it is not an ordinary situation. I think that, that it is still challenging to fight uh, for truth, for democracy on the ground. So what we can do, what we can do more? I think that certainly we should so, uh, we should support NGOs and independent media on the ground. But what I would like to draw your attention to is the fact that even uh, in uh, in 
uh, regulation regarding the promotion of European co-founded projects, still there are some kind of uh, uh, not very proper or, uh, regulations which uh, on the one hand, going to the cutting the cost of this promotion, and on the other hand, uh, what is even more risky, to subordinate it to all to uh, national level, all regulations to national level. And thanks to this, uh, unfortunately, we are uh, we are playing the the game on the national level, which. Uh, we would like to only blame Europe, not, and we would like to only privatize our common successes on the ground uh, with the help of Europe. Thank you very much. Thank you. Member Dulkiewicz, you have the floor for two minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. President, uh, Madam Commissioner. Uh, dear um, Monsieur Glucksmann, um, dear colleagues uh, from the Committee of the Regions, thank you very much for another opinion um, on this uh, very, very crucial topic. In my opinion, this is extremely important. This is also something what I tried to stress also in my opinion pre uh, prepared, um, especially on the European Democracy Action Plan, uh, prepared the document prepared uh, under um, Madam Commissioner Jourova, that this is really, really important important to stress the fact that we really need to care not only at this European level but also at our local and regional level for uh, democracy, for the rule of law, for the values, for independent media. Uh, thank you very much also for mentioning uh, Mayor Paweł Adamowicz and uh, our, uh, our uh, cooperative initiative prepared by the Committee of the Regions, uh, City of Gdansk and ICORN. We launched uh, this award um, Mayor Adamowicz award for the third time, so we are waiting for the best candidatures, uh, not only people, but also um, organizations, uh, those who are supporting those basic values on which European Union uh, is founded and for which we really would like to fight for. Therefore, thank you very much. I want to stress and uh, congratulations to Marek Brzezin, because in my opinion, uh, there are several actions needed, but one basic it was also mentioned by Mr. Gluckman that education, not only at schools, of course this is much easier for us, uh, but also education for those vulnerable group, groups of people, especially uh, seniors, immigrants, and so on and so on, to express how important it is to use democracy in a proper, proper way. Thank you very much. Thank you. Member Rouillon, you have the floor for two minutes. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we know this is an important debate, but liberal democracy is uh, threatened by the rise of the extremes in Europe and uh, the Russian and Chinese dictatorship. And we need to go back to the Greek uh, root of democracy. What we need to d defend today is the demos uh, itself. The term refers to um, the citizens of a, a territory who are informed and take decisions on the best way to progress uh, issues in their territory. However, uh, citizens, uh, uh, unfortunately, may fall into political apathy because they do not have uh, the information available to them. Public opinion is manipulated by social media, which have become uh, the uh, breeding ground of disinformation and foreign interference. So we saw this in the most recent... Uh, um, uh, rights in France, particularly with TikTok. We've also seen in France who have seen young people who have attacked uh, the police and this was shared on Twitter saying France uh, photo of the day. The aim was to try and to uh, exacerbate the chaos and to uh, stigmatise uh, individuals who came who, who had a uh, uh, um, who came from a specific area. There are rights in France. Now here we're talking about images which are being taken uh, uh, by uh, a body with a BBC Verify, which is fighting disinformation and that access. Regulation is not enough. We need self uh, vigilance. We need immunity uh, of people to fight uh, this disinformation. Now, we at local and regional, regional authorities can have a key role when it comes to uh, fighting this. We need to support people. Uh, rational critic. Now, the second part of the word democracy, well, we're demos can also mean it's not only citizens, but it's also the territory itself. Democracy begins and prospers in a territory. It is incumbent upon us to defend it uh, in the uh, villages and, and small towns uh, uh, that we have in Europe. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Member Menazzini, you have the floor for two minutes. Si, thank you very much, President, and thank you very much to the Vice President Jourova, Mr. Glucksman, and other colleagues for their speeches. Uh, I would like to say that local government uh, plays a uh, key role in educational misinformation. In Kapanari in Tuscany, we have a program for young people between 13 and 18 to raise their awareness about the use of artificial intelligence and the uh, processes involved in uh, virtual reality so that uh, they can be protected against uh, incorrect information. As the Vice President said, recommendations uh, for education about how to use uh, social media and protect yourself from misinformation. There could even be a web page to gather best practice at a local level or at a national level and across Europe. That's one idea. I also have an observation about the issue of uh, uh, informatic safety for governments. In April, the Commission proposed a cyber shield to protect us with 1.1 billion euros as a budget. Both in terms of governance and budget, it was founded on a national approach, but which I don't think takes sufficient account of the uh, very distributed way that uh, local governments work. So if we truly want investments to be efficient, they should be made at a local and regional level. Lastly, given the uh, founding meeting on Friday, in which I will re represent the Committee of the Regions, I'd like to say to the Vice President that our organization will give its m support to this. We saw a register for transparency in the European Union. Transparency and ethics will be the uh, watchwords of the internal regulations of the uh, institutions in coming months. You have the floor for three minutes. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, President. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, we are facing major challenges. Uh, we know that we've seen violent attacks in uh, France and, and MERS have been victim as well. We also need to recognize the responsibility that falls to all of us as local and regional authorities. We have seen um, a significant drop in participation to elections in France. So the most recent elections in 2021, it was 34.6 percent turnout. Citizens feel uh, cut off from political processes. Uh, this disinterest um, undermines our society where, because the citizens are the heart of democracy. Moreover, only 33 percent of French citizens have trust in the political institutions. They express their frustration um, and uh, they doubt whether we have the uh, wherewithal to address the problems that we face. Now, with these challenges, local and reg re regional authorities have a problem, have, have a role to uh, do this. We can uh, address their daily concerns, and we're also aware of the aspirations and the hopes. We need to rebuild this b um, bond of trust with citizens. Uh, we need to encourage participation. We should commit ourselves to promote transparency in our actions. We need to fight against corruption and ensure that uh, our decisions are taken in a democratic manner. We need to ensure that citizens can be actively involved in the decision-making process. Local and regional authorities need to be areas where diversity of opinion is um, welcome and uh, we need to make sure that every voice uh, is heard. Uh, at uh, the, the bouche du Rhone uh, level, I'm an elected um, a politician. We've just had um, four months of uh, consultation with citizens uh, and we're talking to people about uh, social cohesion and the green transition. The, uh, we have had uh, educational activities in schools to fight fake news. It, in our department, we have um, individuals and services which are addressing um, uh, issues around uh, values and, and also secularism. We have a 
uh, advisory surface for young people to make them aware about how institutions work. We've just set up a platform for rapid alerts for or whistleblowers, um, which is anonymous, to be able to fight against uh, uh, um, corruption. They're working both at an individual and collective manner. We can reverse these trends and we can defend democracy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Member Ortil, you have the floor for two and a half minutes. Thank you, President. Madam President, to start with, I would like to express our concern with recent I incidents in France where uh, members of local government become object of attacks. We are also worried by the fact that EU institutions are not talking about the level of legal order and threat to democracy in France. Polish citizens are disappointed with the delay of European help uh, after the pandemic and hearing uh, about the threats to cohesion funds can see that not all nations are treated equally in Europe. The delayed are supported by ad arguments that are difficult to understand and this is harmful to our cohesion policy. The convergence process is also hurting the, the image of the European Union in those regions. It's not helping democracy. Geopolitical situation has been changing. In the EU it is also important that you can see the scopes of responsibility at different level of government so one should probably remember that there is uh, still there, are pr there, there is the principle of subsidiarity to be followed. There are things that we need to do together, irrespective of our political uh, colors. We need to defend our democracy against foreign interference. It's a major duty for all of us, because information spreads like uh, wildfire, and we must protect our processes against foreign influence and disinformation. Local and regional authorities must be more sensitive and more aware of that. More spending is needed on cyber security, on protecting critical infrastructure, protecting electoral system against manipulation. At the level of the European Union, we can cooperate our, coordinate our action to counteract foreign interference. The opinion by Mr. Brzezin includes clear recommendations on the best practices on how to achieve our goals. Now, if we look at the issues of, uh, from the European perspective, European democracy is being defended by the Ukrainian nation. Uh, solidarity is a Polish specialty and we all must be determined to support Ukraine. Although the circumstances are different, Ukraine is also facing a similar uh, challenge of uh, decentralization and building a strong local government. Local governments represent people on the ground uh, at the central level. Thank you very much. You have the floor for two minutes. Gracias. Thank you very much, President. Uh, Vice President Jourova, Mr. Glucksmann, the President of the CIVEX Committee. Of course, the governments uh, that are closest to the citizens can push forward and reinforce the European project and democracy. This is why progressive forces are here to face the threats to democracy and rights, uh, which are being threatened by the far right and disinformation and hate speech as a political tool. In Catalonia, we have been seeing uh, these uh, uh, hate speeches. The Catalan date, the biggest uh, European uh, spying uh, scandal, showed up the weakness of our democracies. These weaknesses that open the door to the far right. In the, in the Pegasus case in uh, Spain, revealed the shame of socialist politicians who did not condemn it and threatened a peaceful uh, democratic project that involved uh, millions of uh, European citizens, which is the independentist movement in Catalonia. The rise of the far right also affects the European uh, culture and linguistic um, wealth. 
the far-right party Vox are operating a direct attack on the Catalan language and culture in uh, the Balearics and Valencia. This is removing linguistic rights from citizens, and it's a step backwards provoked by ignorance and fear that is trying to sow uh, hate speech and ignorance. The government of Catalonia defends the fact that everybody should be able to live in their own language and culture, and we will not stop until Catalan is officially recognized here in the European Union. That also benefits the European project and our citizens. Fascism cannot be laundered and it cannot be played with. We have to fight fascism. All progressive forces are mobilizing around Europe because they will not be allowed to pass in Catalonia or in Europe. Our life and our freedom is at stake. Member Ratilainen, you have the floor for two minutes. Thank you, Chair, distinguished speakers and dear colleagues. We found ourselves in cities and regions in, in the face of new set of challenges, far-right movements and the erosion of common democratic values in many countries. It is very much a local issue, as said, because the victims are not only systems and societies, but also individual people, the citizens of our regions and cities. <laughs> I would like to emphasize that online dis and misinformation that is often mentioned, hate speech, manipulation and interference always reflects attitudes, norms, harmful behavior, discrimination of minorities and anti-democratic ideologies of the real world. Therefore, our theory of change has always to be first and foremost there in the real world. In the context of the election to the European Parliament, this debate, as well as the opinion of today, uh, presented by the rapporteur, are very, very topical and current. Building societal resilience to disinformation starts at early age, as said in the previous speak speakers. Integration of media literacy education is needed in the school curricula. But I don't think that the main challenge lies in the adults of the future, but more likely of adults of today. This is also where the regions and cities need more tools and support because it is also much more challenging than to reach the youth and children of today. A quote by Martin Niemöller, a German pastor, has been recently widely shared in Finnish social media. It tells about the reaction of majorities when they see different groups of people and democracy under attack. The quote ends, then they came for me and there was no one else left to speak for me. The opinion uh, that will be adopted today in this plenary especially suggests a framework of possible initiatives of local and regional level in the area of countering this of information. This, I think, is very useful. Toolbox can fix challenges to democracy combined with the behavioral change, but it also asks for courage from who, who leads the people to recognize and acknowledge anti-democratic ideologies and patterns of the adults. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Member Turk, one minute. Uh, dear Mr. Chair, dear colleagues, cities and regions, as a local government, the closest to the citizens have a special uh, responsibility when talking about democracy and defending democratic values. To successfully address these challenges, it is clear that we need funds to strengthen capacities, additional materials, uh, systemic approach, use of good practices, and support and exchange of best practices with our colleagues. In many aspects, we have made good steps forward, but it is most important that these tools be accessible to all member states and all levels of government, without their wide application we will have no real results therefore i believe that members of this distinguished body we need to give our contribution to promote this topic and to motivate others to do all the necessary steps in order to strengthen their own capacities to address this struggle against disinformation and here i include also support of pluralism in local and regional media you have the floor for one minute president during times of crisis, as we currently experience, disinfact, disinformation can be terribly dangerous. So 
we have to live up to the expectations of citizens in the area in which are decisive for human life. For example, for digit digitalization has to be in the interest of people uh, to solve daily problems of citizens, health care to uh, housing. So the same ap applies to the European elections. In the run-up to the European elections, we have to get people enthusiastic for Europe, for example, with events, with competitions, European Day uh, twenty. 24. Europe only has one future, and if those generation, if the young, if young people aren't, have to be actively involved in its creation, because the European train can only remain on the tracks and achieve its destination if we have support for democracy at every level. Thank you. Member Fernandez Viana, you have one minute. Gracias, Presidente. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, alliance, alliances with the extreme right have been seen across Europe, even in Spain. We are to access that. Uh, we say that uh, the far right is uh, permeating institutions and its uh, influence on negotiations on climate change uh, and the measures to address this. We're seeing um, impacts. Uh, being had on um, other areas as well, seeing criminalisation of immigrants, we're also seeing xenophobia which goes against uh, the Constitution, we're also seeing um, steps being taken against uh, abortion rights and uh, rights for women. This is a step back, uh, and political leaders at le local and regional level cannot um, uh, turn their backs. The question is, what can we do? Uh, what uh, at all different levels to fight these? Those of us who are part of political parties that. Uh, represent uh, dem democratic systems. We've understood that the far right is a threat. We need to ensure that we have PACs to facilitate uh, work to, de to defend the common uh, goods. New member Magyar, you have the floor for one minute. This time, Mr. Uh, Madam Commissioner, although we've been hearing lots of critical remarks about the rule of law in Hungary, it has to be said that the policies of the Hungarian government are based on the will of the Hungarian people who have consistently re-elected uh, this government uh, four times in a row. The government enjoys widespread support as well as the trust of its citizens who know that the government will conscientiously represent their interests and look after their needs. It is uh, paramount that there be a fair and uh, uh, respectful dialogue between uh, the uh, institutions and member states. Uh, a criticism of the rule of law should not become an arbitrary political tool to avoid substantive debate and to silence the opponent. The rhetoric of the representatives of institutions has a major impact on dialogue and can stand in the way of mutual understanding and efforts to promote cooperation. We call on the EU institutions to fully respect the principle of subsidiarity and the democratic will of uh, the citizens. There should not be any double standards. You have the floor for one minute. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, local and regional governments have a pivotal a role to play in preventing the spread of uh, disinformation. Firstly, we possess the local knowledge needed for a more tailored and effective strategy in countering disinformation. We can deliver targeted messages that dispel falsehoods, promote critical thinking, and foster media literacy. Secondly, we have the opportunity to engage directly with our voters and cultivate an informed and resilient community that can independently separate the truth from disinformation spread and malice. And thirdly, we have the means to create links across sectors by bringing together local media, educational institutions and other stakeholders. We can create comprehensive and coordinated strategies and initiatives to combat disinformation. And as far as I am concerned, we put the emphasis on education of young learners in particular. We have our work set out for us because disinformation campaigns are sure to be launched ahead of the European elections. Thank you. Thank you. Member Ilya, you have the floor for one minute. Microphone for the speaker, please. 
În contextul agresiunii rusi. In the context of Russia's aggression on Ukraine, the importance of local authorities in defending democracy is now more significant than ever. Us in Tulcea, at the border with Ukraine, we are at the front, uh, front of this war, and we know uh, what this means, and we are committed to fighting propaganda that is threatening our democracy. We are seeing negative actions by individuals, and uh, disruptions of uh, flows in goods are justified in order to uh, promote aggression, and we take a stance against this propaganda. Um, we have a major infrastructure um, uh, pro program now, uh, a, bill, a bridge in our region, but this is not enough. We need more funding. We need more infrastructure uh, to build bridges between Tulcea and uh, Constanza. As the mayor of Tulcea, I am trying to convince the EU of the necessity of such investments. We need infrastructure, EU infrastructure at the border with Ukraine, because this will promote EU values and will build resilience against threats to our democracy. Thank you. Thank you. Member Klisovic, you have the floor for one minute. Thank you, Mr. President. It is obvious that our democracy is under attack from domestic and foreign elements. Domestically, a number of interested groups which do not care at all for democracy, but only for their own interests, primarily criminal and financial, jeopardize our democracy every day. Internationally, attack on our democracy is a part of a special warfare, and therefore everybody should be alarmed, including local authorities. Both try to manipulate public opinion and decision-making in, in democratic institutions. This is a very serious issue since our democracy is based on citizens' trust in these institutions. Therefore, our defense should include our citizens. It's a citizen's democracy. Our answer should be participative democracy. Main task of local authorities to work with citizens through different programs to encourage them to actively engage in defending democracy as much as they can. And as, at the same time, we should be minded that the platforms for direct citizens' participation could be misused for attacking the same, Thank same you. democracy. Member Rausio, you have the floor of one minute. Dear President, dear Commissioner, I will speak Finnish now and tell a few examples from my hometown, Hamelinna, what we've done in this very important topic. Demokratia opitaan arjessa. Kotikaupungissani... Democracy, of course, is learned in the daily life. And in my town, young people are involved everywhere. We ask them what the priorities should be, human rights, climate change, sustainable development. Hamelinia is a child-friendly town, the first one in Finland which, uh, in where young people can make these decisions. For example, how to spend the budget. And in that fashion, they, they believe in us. We have the possibility throughout the EU to, to to learn from this and a, learn, a new way of approaching democracy using the tools we already have. Young people have to know more about the EU, what the EU does, what the values are, and so that's why we have to speak very clearly in the social media. Florian Wunscht, YAEP, you have the floor for one minute. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Let me talk about trust today. Democracy needs trust. Democracy needs trust both into elected representatives but also into our um, institutions of democracy. I think we need to acknowledge that today, in many cases, trust is already gone. Trust has been lost in many cases because of scandals all over the continent, unfortunately also here within the European Parliament. It will be particularly up to the local political level to restore trust. So how can we do that? Um, I cannot stress enough the importance of participative projects, participative processes, whenever we on the local level um, are ready to uh, invest in our infrastructure, in schools, in roads, in whatever case, frankly. We need to proactively involve our fellow citizens. We need to organize town hall meetings as often as we can and make people feel heard. Because in the end, regaining Thank trust you. is also defending democracy. Thank you. Thank you Go very card. much. One minute. Herr President, uh, Frau Kommissar President, Madam Commissioner. In town halls, this is really where you see uh, democracy firsthand. First of all, in Bavaria, we're having involving young people at the communal level, 
And so we have young people involved. And secondly, we use the Austrian model, and we have this network we've created among uh, city councils throughout Europe so that the local councillors uh, are involved. And then thirdly, in our local parliament, we've decided by 2024 we would, we would like to have that the European Year Against Hate. So I hope you can take that into account. Thank you. Thank you. Karaksoni, one minute. He said, Bistos Asso. Madam Commissioner, Hungary and Poland have been accused of violating um, the rule of law on many occasions. The loudest accusations often come from the European institutions themselves. Before pointing your finger at someone else, we should all look closer at home and see if our acts are in line with our values. The recent track record of European institutions, as far as rule of law principles are concerned, uh, is rather patchy. Therefore, next year, the Hungarian uh, presidency is probably going to propose a rule of law mechanism for the European institutions themselves. I encourage all of you uh, defenders of the rule of law to support this Hungarian initiative to guarantee that the rule of law is a uh, reality at every level in the European Union. Thank you. Member Egedus, you have the floor. One minute. Thank you very much. Uh, Commissioner Jourova, Vice President Jourova, I think it's very important to have trust in European institutions. I come from uh, the town of Vesprim in Hungary and uh, I see this trust disappearing because the citizens feel that uh, the local level is punished due to uh, political disputes. For example, our local university cannot take part in the Erasmus program or the RRF funding is not coming to Hungary. I think we can only restore trust in Europe and European institutions if the citizens feel that the institutions respect local, regional and national elections and their results. It is our common interest to build uh, strong local communities, strong towns and regions, and only strong nations can form the basis of a strong Europe. Thank you. Thank you. Schwarz Kiefer, one minute. Vielen Dank. Thank you very much. I would like to draw your attention to a very important point. The sp a spreading disinformation knows no borders. In other words, multilingual people are endangered by fake news in a number of different languages, especially uh, if we were talking about national minorities. So, if there, for example, if we hear fake news about the war in Ukraine, and it depends, we content in the mother native language is is, is something that's is often replaced by information in the national language. So we have to be, it's very important to have the correct uh, information in order to cor correctly fight disinformation. So the inf information, it has to be tailored to the language, language usage of the population. So it's very important to uh, see that the dependence of most media I on the central government is so great that this is often not the case. Thank you. Member Karayanis, one minute. Thank you very much, Chairman. And thank you for the Committee of the Regions for organizing this debate. It's a basic plank in the European democracy. We cannot protect our physical integrity as small towns Every day we're exposed to uh, threats, as well as our families. We receive hostile reactions from citizens and often threats of physical violence. Democracy stops where we need to be protected from our own citizens. Harzus in Germany is a town where the mayor has received many uh, threats and uh, recent events in uh, France confirm this. We need 
uh, guidance on how we can react to these uh, sort of events. Thank you. Thank you. Member Alex Doro, one minute. Herr President. President, at a time where information is very easy, accessible, and it spreads very rapidly, of course we have an enormous flood of information, and we're faced with uh, conscious manipulation of this, which undermines trust in our society and, uh, and it influences our opinions. So this kind of information is, is essentially comes from right and left extremism. And of course, this can have a horrible impact on elections, uh, encouraging hate and destabilizing the situation. So it's up to the regions to recognize this and approach it in an order fashion. For example, as a representative of Bavaria, I expect more involvement in Tr training people in how to use the media, and Bavaria is all already in, uh, supporting regional projects in media competence. So let the regions work against this destabilization. One minute. Panie Przewodniczący. President, uh, Madam Commissioner, uh, the membership in the European Union is not only about financial benefits, uh, but it's above all about uh, respect for democracy and human rights. Uh, local self-government is the closest to citizens, and we are also among beneficiaries of EU support. This is why we are especially responsible for uh, providing uh, valid information about the European Union at the local level, uh, also including uh, values of this community. We have decided in referendum to join the European Union and we want uh, to continue along this way. Uh, the Brexit experience indicates very clearly that it is in our own common interest to, to fight disinformation and to ensure that the messages uh, targeting citizens are uh, valid and just. We need to ensure resilience for the future and security. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I consider that the European Committee of the Regions uh, embraced exemplary the spirit of last year's uh, European Year of uh, Youth. The munip municipalities uh, have a very important role in fostering uh, youth uh, participation and bringing Europe closer to its uh, young people. Special effort uh, need to be made to reach young people who normally do not participate, those uh, who are marginalized. By recognizing the unique uh, perspective concerns uh, and contribution of young uh, people, uh, local and regional authorities can empower youth and enable uh, them to be active participants uh, in the strategic communication efforts uh, surrounding the European Parliament elections. Involving youth uh, in the process not only ensures their voice uh, are heard, but also cultivate a sense of ownership, uh, ownership and engagement in the democratic process, leading to more inclusive and representative Thank European you. Union. Thank you. Bereni, one minute. Thank you, Mr. President. Madam Commissioner, to protect our democratic values, we must ensure freedom of speech, help people understand the media better, and encourage critical thinking. This is especially important in Slovakia, where research showed that about 56% of the Slovak citizens believes in conspiracy theories. We must also protect national minorities. In Trnava region, where I come from, there is a significant Hungarian and Roma minority. Everyone should have the same opportunities, because only then democracy and the EU membership could be widely enjoyed. By working together to include everyone and respect their rights, we can protect and strengthen democracy. Our regions cities and villages are the building blocks of democracy representing the dreams and the needs of the local people. Without successful and democratic regions, cities and villages, there is no strong European Union. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Glucksmann, you have the floor for final remarks, three minutes. Merci, Monsieur. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you to everyone for your extremely important uh, comments. Uh, I'd like to pick up on what Mr. Bieni said, said there will be no strong European democracy without strong local democracy. Now, when we have uh, um, disinformation and interference, we are all faced with a choice. We can either turn in on ourselves uh, 
um, and the impact that will have for our democracy, or we maintain our democracy open. We understand how others, such as in, in Taiwan, that we need to fight interference. The way to do so is to cultivate to civil participation in public life. In order to do so, we need massive investments, and we also need to change it to local level and a European level. We need to change in institutions and a change in mentality. We need to have much higher levels of participation in public life. Moreover, we also need to give ourselves the um, tools to address this. We need to have penalties against this, and we need the penalties need to be much uh, stronger, not only sanctions against uh, Vladimir Putin. What are we going to do to those states who try to uh, corrupt our elite or try and... Um, um, uh, provide disinformation. Currently, these penalties are very weak. We also need to be uh, a lot uh, harder with those individuals who are in our uh, political systems, those who are responsible for foreign interference. A number of you have mentioned the risk of the far right. We need to say it and we need to say it clearly. All the individuals who uh, who hide behind patriotism are those who have been hiding behind uh, the protection of uh, Vladimir Putin for decades. Uh, they have been acting against the aims and needs of our states. Uh, we need to finally come to um, a situation together. We need to reinvigorate democracy. It needs to be done at a local level and also at a Europe European level. We need to fight authoritarianism, xenophobia, which was, we have a collective responsibility uh, to fight together. We need to be enthusiastic and passionate about our democracy. Uh, we need to um, be proud of the fact that we belong to European democracy. Madam Vice President, you have the floor for final remarks for five minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. President, and thank you uh, uh, all for, for very inspirative debate. And, and uh, I, I took a lot of notes, as the President sees here, so maybe you are concerned about my five minutes, but I will manage. Um, I will try to be short, uh, because uh, in many of your contributions we heard the word disinformation. And uh, in, in many of uh, your contributions, we heard that we have to be more efficient in fighting this, uh, this phenomenon, which is not new, but it got its power through the through internet and social media. Uh, we discuss here about disinformation in light or in connection with the protection of democracy. I want to say that uh, it must not be the case for European democracy uh, that disinformation in political competition will be winning. In other words, lying must not be the winner in European elections or national elections. And that's why I want to explain that uh, the measures we are taking against this information do not uh, contain censorship, because some of you said that this is about, uh, also about the protection of freedom of speech, and I fully subscribe to it. Our angle, how we look at the need to do something against this, informa this information is security and protection of elections. And uh, when... Uh, I, I have not enough time, but I will tell you six things uh, which we find important to, to happen in a uh, systemic fight against disinformation. Uh, I will not surprise you. The first point for me is to be telling the people the truth and to be clear and to communicate better. Because uh, the fact that the disinformers are using social media in such an efficient way, it has to be a lesson for us and to do the same thing, but uh, equip the people with trustworthy information and simply in our communication to count with the existence of disinformation. And it's not so, so difficult to predict what the disinformers will, will invent. I think that we should be first informing people. The second, what we do with the platforms, we are pushing them to increase capacities to do the proper fact-checking, uh, because uh, disinformation is a verifiable lie. We speak about facts, we don't speak about Opinions. So we want the platforms to increase uh, the, uh, com uh, the uh, 
fact-checking in all languages. We want them also to do uh, much more against the Russian war propaganda because we are in information war. The third thing, demonetize the disinformers. And we are in a very uh, intense communication with the advertising industry uh, to stop the, the funding of disinformation systems uh, and not to send uh, the ads representing or showing their brands to such systems. The fourth, education. And uh, here, of course, you, you have it also in, in your hands to a very large extent. And, and I think that only through awareness raising and education, we will get to the point that when the people will uh, have the tools to uh, uh, think twice, <laughs> whether to send things further or uh, whether they are not fed up uh, by manipulation. I think that uh, we also need to see the society being more resilient. Fifth, action of law enforcement because many pieces of disinformation fulfill the qualification of, of, uh, of the crime, especially the alerting, panicking news uh, messages or the, uh, the disinformation which has the potential to incite violence. So this is the, for the law enforcement to go, uh, go after the cases. And the sixth point, uh, to have strong, professional, very well-functioning independent media in every member state. So, so this is the plan. And uh, so once again, in the European plan to fight against this information, it's not about censorship. It's not about removing the content. Now uh, on two more topics. Uh, uh, Madame Magyar spoke about the Hungarian people. We fully recognize the will of Hungarian people who showed their will in, their, uh, in the elections. Uh, and uh, that's why, because the, the people, be it Hungarian people or any other uh, uh, citizens, uh, are in the driving seat of our democratic system. Uh, we need to have guaranteed in all the member states that the elections are free and fair. And that, for instance, the media in each country can work uh, in uh, full independence, including the public service media. Also, I will stay in, in uh, Hungary. Yes, I am concerned about the uh, decreasing number, uh, percentage of trust of Hungarian people towards the EU. Uh, but I am not surprised because after the permanent campaign which the government is organizing against the EU, I don't wonder that the trust of people is going down. And that's why also... I want to say that I am personally not happy about the blocking of Erasmus funding for Hungarian students, and I think that we should do something against that. This is also partly or to a large extent in the hands of Hungarian government and Hungarian authorities, and we work with them because I think that Hungarian students should have equal possibility to travel to study abroad. And last comment on EU uh, funds. I, I saved 17 seconds before. At the beginning, so... <laughs> you spent already 40. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, but this will be a very short uh, comment, uh, which will be sent to, to Poland. Thank you, Mr. Ortil and Mr. Geblevich and Alexander Dulkevich, all, all, the, all the comments from the side of the Polish colleagues. Uh, I want to say on, uh, on uh, EU funding. EU funding is not and has never been unconditional. There have always been conditions, and according to our rules, uh, the EU funding cannot go into the hands of those who do not respect the Charter of Fundamental Rights and to those who are not able to protect the EU money against corruption or fraud. These are the conditions, these are the rules which are uh, valid for all the member states, and I think that this is very important that we uh, stick to the rules. Uh, I was quick, but I, I needed that one minute more. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Thank you, Mr. Kluxman. I know you're in a tight schedule, so thank you so much for being with us and sharing uh, your thoughts. Thank you. thank you. Have a nice day. Now the floor goes to the rapporteur. I think the rapporteur. The rapporteur. Three minutes. Thank you very much uh, for this debate and for your comments and observations. Uh, 
the sharing of information and exchanging of information of individual uh, member state regions and cities is extremely important because it contributes to new initiatives uh, combating disinformation. Uh, Thus, we are not passive and we do not allow anyone to undermine the foundations of our democracy and we build resilient uh, local, local communities. I hope that uh, the recommendations that are included in this opinion will be an inspiration for your further um, efforts and new initiatives aimed at counteracting uh, manipulation uh, and disinformation. I do believe that this will translate into specific actions which will uh, yield specific uh, benefits in maintaining and building democracy. Thank you very much. I'm the one who thank you. Let's go to vote on the opinion. I think